All right, guys, so <clears throat> you made it to round two. Uh, so what we're going to look at today is just some of the mathematical properties of Python. Uh, this is not going to be a very long lesson. I just want to show you a few different things. Uh, we're just going to focus on some real basic stuff. And let's even open up a notepad so I can toss this up over here, shrink this, because there's a few things I want to talk about. So we'll kind of have like a notes section up here. Uh, let's see, basic arithmetic, I spelled it right, cool. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna do that, we're gonna do, uh, let's see, math with text, I'll throw text in quotes, uh, you'll see why in a bit. And then also we have to do that good old PEMDAS. Uh, that's really all that we need to look at for this. I'm gonna show you some neat things, and that's basically what I wanna cover in this really quick lesson. Uh, this is lesson 2.1. So anyway, let's get started. I'm going to click on start. I can scroll down to my Python installation and click on idle if I want to open it. We can do that. Or if you want to be lazy like me, just type in the word idle. I'm going to click it. It's going to open it up. And cool. I'll half screen it. We'll leave that. And we'll shift this back over a bit. Let's line that up to the screen. There we go. Beautiful. All right. Uh, so another thing that we can do to make life easier is right click down here and pin to taskbar That way when I close it, I can just click down here to reopen it. That's something for Windows If you're on a Mac, you're kind of on your own for this uh, Sorry, I'm a Windows and Linux kind of guy, but uh, I'm sure you could figure that out at this point So remember we want to go to file new file to make a new window open And I'm just going to resize things so they look a little bit more uh, manageable and things like that all right, uh, so we can show off in the shell or the idle section what the mathematical results look like. Uh, so really, like, for this example, let's just do the line by line just because we want to learn how Python thinks. Uh, but I did want to open up that example of, you know, we could put it in here. Like I said, basic, basic arithmetic 5 plus 9. And if I run it, it's going to do the calculation. So let's call this, uh, I'll save this in desktop. I think it's my, yep, my Python files, example, oh, no, exercise. Exercise 2.1 and save. We look at the results. We actually get nothing because we didn't ask Python to print 5 plus 9. We just said calculate it. I said, all right, calculated it. And that's it. So run, run module. Okay. And now we get the result of 14. Now, if you put quotations around it, let's see what we get. We actually get the letters or the characters 5 plus 9. So just make sure for now, if you put quotations around it, it will take things literally. Just like if I tell you to literally understand something, you're going to literally understand it. Uh, I don't know if that made perfect sense, but we're going to go with it. Uh, but anyway, never put quotations on it. So 5 plus 9 just as it is. But there's a faster way. I can just plug it in right here, 5 plus 9, 14, and it will actually calculate and return the result to us on the shell. So again, basic things. Addition, we kind of got 1 plus 1. All right, we can also do subtraction, 5 minus 3. Um, you know, we can do multiplication, 5 star 4. All right. And also division, 8 divided by 2 gives us 4.0 on here as well. All right, uh, so just things to keep in mind with how Python works. Uh, you may also run, notice, I just noticed, I'm running five, uh, Python 3.7, uh, 3.8, it's fine. Don't worry about it too much. Um, the basic ideas that we're learning so far work just fine, and if you have a newer version, it's just going to work better for you. All right, what I can also do is 8.00 divided by 2, and even then it does the rounding for us. So what if I do something like 9 divided by 5? All right, we got 1.8, so decimals also work in that sense. Okay, now, here's where I'm going to show you something that's a little more tricky. Uh, it's going to be 2 star star 3. That gives us 8. Uh, the star star operator, I'll give you a hint to play around with it now mentally. Uh, the star star operator is one step above multiplication. It's kind of like multiplication of multiplication, in a way. Uh, if I did something like 5 star star 2, that gives us 25. 3 star star 2 gives us 9. 4 star star 2 gives us 16. 
Maybe you're starting to see the trick, maybe you're not. Five star star three gives us 125. Five star star four gives us 625. Basically what's happening is uh, this number is the regular number that we're doing the arithmetic operator to. Star star means raised to the power of and then four. So if we look at that again, seven star star two, that's seven to the power two, and that gives us 49. All right, something ridiculous like seven star star seven gives us a massive number, 823,543. So, you know, just things to keep in mind when it comes to, uh, you know, doing certain types of mathematics, just general basic mathematics. Uh, for this course, that's the extent of math that we really need to do. We're going to do some multiplying, we're going to do some dividing, um, you know, we're going to maybe find fractions or decimals. Like for example, if I want to cut something half, I, in half, I could say it's uh, 24 divided by 2. What I could also do is 24 times 0 0.5, you know, just kind of understand how decimals work. They kind of give us the same thing. Uh, that's as far as I really want to go with this. All right. So Python will calculate each of these items out for us. Um, there's some additional stuff though. So basic arithmetic, we're good. Let's get rid of that. All right. What we can also do is quote, let's say a plus b. Can we add our text together? All right. Yeah, we get a b. They just get smushed together into one single item. And you could even go further with that. A plus b plus c uh, make sure you're putting the quotes on the text for now we will learn in chapter four uh, what happens when we don't put in the quotes but anyway we can add whatever we want pretty neat okay uh, let's see if we can do a times five let's see if we can take text and multiply it we can we can get five a's all right let's go further uh, let's do hello times 100. Hello, 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 hello. And we can get a bunch of those showing up. All right. Now, if we wanted to fix it so there were spaces, we would need to put the quotes, uh, quote, hello, and then put a space and then the quote times 100. And that allows us to just kind of space it out and put spaces between each of them so it's a little bit more legible. Uh, some cool things you can do with this is like we can start making like symbols. Uh, so let's see, I did that, 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 that. I'm just trying to throw in a bunch of symbols to make it look nice and neat. All right, we can kind of just add like this cool little like design pattern that goes through on our text when I did some sort of any number of strange symbols times 100. I think it looks kind of cool. It's nothing fancy, but you can do some neat things and like, again, this is some of the bare bones basics of why we have programming. I don't want to type out this 100 times. I would rather represent the idea to a computer of take this and I'd like you to repeat it 100 times for me. Uh, that's pretty much the, es the essence of a lot of coding. It's to get repetitive tasks and high-end mathematical tasks to go repeat or you know do the task that somebody doesn't want to do over and over again. It's kind of like a mental automation of things. All right, so if we can add and multiply, we should be able to subtract a a minus a. Nope, we are not able to do that. We got yelled at. It said unsupported operand types for a minus sign, str and str. We're not going to worry about that just yet, but we're learning that we are not allowed to subtract. Okay. What about AA divided by two? I want to cut it in half. No, same thing. Um, I think adding is kind of more user intuitive because we're trying to add a plus B plus C plus D plus E plus whatever we want to do. And multiplying is just, Hey, you know, multiplying is really just the repetition of adding. You know, if I say uh, something like a times 20, I'm really just saying a plus a plus a plus dot dot, like all the way to the end of the 20 times that I want that to happen. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of the idea of the math with text. Uh, I don't think we are able to raise it to a power. Nope, we're not allowed to do that either. So we're just going to chalk it up as. We can multiply and we can add. Cool. 
All right, so that concludes our math with text. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is PEMDAS. You probably learned that in your math class. Basically, it means the order of operations. And in Python, that's kind of important as well. Let's say I want to do something like, uh, let's say, 8 plus 3 times 2. All right. Do the mental math in your head right now. Uh, there's two possible answers. You could, you could hopefully, two answers you could get from this. Uh, although in my 10 years of teaching, I've gotten some pretty ridiculous answers when asking that. But the first one that people would get is 22. And the second answer that somebody could get is 14, within reason. Um, so we know back in our math class that the order of operations is incredibly important. All right. So what PEMDAS basically means is it's the acronym that represents what we need to do first in order. So P is for parentheses. All right. Those are these, if anyone doesn't remember. E is for exponents. That's raising things to the power. We've done that. All right. M is for multiply. That's just the star. Uh, D is for divide. That's the slash. Addition or A is for addition and S is for subtraction. So this is the order that Python will go through each of these things to figure out what it will do first. So first off, Python will scout for parentheses. I see no parentheses. I see no exponents. All right, we move to multiplication. Ooh, I see some multiplication here. Three times two, that should give us six. And then we do the addition plus eight. So if it follows PEMDAS, we should get 14. If it reads left to right, like we do when we read text or things like that, that should give us 22, all right? We did indeed get 14 because Python is a mathematical language and obviously if it's doing math, uh, it's gonna follow the basic rules of math. Uh, and you'll find that even like the order of operations, um, yes, it is included in Python programming, but also like you'll find it just about anywhere. You'll find more and more that you learn about math, you'll realize more and more the world cares about doing math properly. Uh, in almost every field that you go in. So just a little tidbit and a little uh, you know, thing I went off on. So anyway, uh, I'm looking at this 22. How could we possibly get the 22? Well, in that case, it read the 8 plus 3 first, because it would read uh, right, left to right. And then we would multiply that result times 2. So if I wanted to force this answer to turn into 22, I would throw parentheses around 8 plus 3. And then I would multiply it times 2. And that gives us 22. All right, so that's the basic idea of math. I just want you to understand how the mathematics in this work. Uh, you know, I'm not necessarily expecting you to be a brilliant genius mathematician after this course or anything like that. But this will get you better at math in many, many ways. So. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to toss them into the chat. Uh, we don't really have too many assignments for today, but I would like you to play around with some mathematical numbers. And I would like you to create your own little design, multiplying a design times like 100 or something like that, uh, just so we could see some neat stuff and see what emerges from there. All right. So uh, that's pretty much chapter two. Uh, chapter three, we're going to learn a lot of other extra things. We're going to go into graphics, so we're going to learn how to move something called turtles. And this is going to be a nice way for us to just, oh, excuse me, a nice little way for us to just learn how graphics work. Um, they're going to look very old school, very retro, very like, you know, Mario era graphics and capabilities, but I think that's going to be all right. Um, you know, again, we're learning the basics. We want to learn the in absolute introductory pieces before we move on to something else from there. All right. Anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Stay tuned for the next episode, and I will see you all soon. Have a wonderful day.